Hello, I'm Paul. I'm Adam. And I'm Ben. And welcome to Film Busters. Film Busters. Film Busters. Ben, please tell me your score in the question game. I've got 26. I've got 25. And I've got 23. So just so everyone, this is our little question game. I ask a question every week and Ben or Adam have to get it right. If they do not get it right, I get the point. Yes. And we, we get a fish. Yeah. Yes. What do we get? That's a, the prize. What is going overall. to be the prize? Over the, in a the, fish. You just a said fish. it. A cod. One cod. <laughs> one cod. <laughs> and one mackerel loin. And a swordfish if you do really well. And yeah. some jellied eels for the runner-up. Lovely. Right, here we go. Heather Donoghue, Michael Williams and Josh Leonard starred in which groundbreaking 90s horror movie? Psycho. S- no, you're no, wrong. No, I know what you fun. did last summer. That's not right either. No. Say no. the names again. I don't know. Say 90s. the names again. I'll give you another go. Oh, shit, it's not fucking... Heather Donoghue, you both have one guess. Fuck my yeah. life. Heather Donoghue, oh, oh, Michael Williams, Blair Witch Project, Josh. Blair Witch Project. Well done. That's it. But actually, I'm never getting that. Technically, based on our rules, that should I be know, Paul's it should point. be my point. Technically. Yeah, but we'll, you fuck you. That's Paul's. Point. I'll take that point. Thank you. Yeah, if I if I'd been Thanks patient. Thanks for being so generous. Yeah. Well, very uh, well done to Paul. Thank you. So that's what twenty six. I got just you said horror film that was groundbreaking, and I got excited and just said that. What did you say, Psycho? Yeah, silly boy. In the I 90s. just kind of trying to jump ahead and just trying to get a question. It, in. it did say groundbreaking nineties horror film. Yeah, but I was thinking like. From the 19th. I was trying to think. Heather Donahue. I know that name, but it's not a famous name. But it's because I was obsessed with Blair Witch. That's why I remember that Heather Donahue name. What's your favourite moment in Blair Witch? Or anything with Mike in it. Anything with Mike in it. Mike's the sort of like Charlie Day type character, the one that's a bit chubby. He's got, he's got mm. the beard. He's got the hat, and he's like grumpy all like the time. Chubby guy from my Antonio. But funny. <laughs> Just <laughs> like that. Yes. Not annoying. Right, you move on to news. On some news. 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 Don't give a fuck about That's, bit. That's not the bit. That's not the skit. That's not the part. Excuse me, can you pass me that newspaper from over there? I want to know what's going on at the pictures. Thank you. Tom Cruise is rumoured to be playing the Green Lantern, aka Hal Jordan, who is a fighter pilot, just like Top Gun, and he pretty much has the same personality as well. I hate to talk about Green Lantern. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. If they play... If they... I know you, the Ben. You don't give. Doing? You don't even care about this. I know you don't care about this. I don't care about it. But I don't really care for Green Lantern. I know. I know. But but I'm. Quite Wasn't Green about Lantern? It. They're already a movie of Green Lantern with like yeah, fucking Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Reynolds again yeah. is a common denominator of shit. Superhero <laughs> films. Fuck that guy, man. Have you even seen the first Deadpool? Why would I? Because you can see what like a monster. I'm not. I don't like. We him. bring Deadpool up in every episode. I know. I swear. Yeah, because Ben hates it so much. <laughs> Let me start bringing up fucking Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. He's mentioned there. GTA recently though. It's not I like know, he's yeah. in GTA. I mentioned GTA in like the first podcast episode. Then and then the second one, something like I bring up in every episode. This is the new the new GTA. Just mentioning. Isn't Tom Cruise Deadpool. too old to be in it? No. Well, the the thing is, if they did it like he's already been Green Lantern for a while, and he's like an older Green Lantern, right? And I think it'd be quite good if they actually done it well. What's the story about Because Green he's Lantern? he's he's good in what is he, he does. Gonna be, he's not a bad actor. Is he, he? going to be Green Lantern in the actual Justice League films as well? That's what no, that what it'd be. He would be Green Lantern in the Justice League films. Oh, all oh, right. It's in that universe. Is it? It's yeah. not Marvel. No. No. no, no, no. All right. Tom Shall- Cruise, Ben Affleck, Jason Momoa, Henry Cavill. I got nothing to say no. about that. Doesn't mean anything to me. Well, this would be great to move on to news. Don't give a fuck about straight away. We should probably put that in the news. <laughs> don't give a fuck about. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling. I put this in news. Don't give a fuck about. Right. We might have to sort. But I feel like I feel like it. Ben's gonna go. Actually, I quite like that. But at the same time, probably not. Where's the Where's the little jingle going in? All this it's already It's already been in. We've done it already. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this is silly. Right? <laughs> a biopic called Honey Boy is coming out, which is about Shia LaBeouf's life with his father. Growing up, and it will star Shy as his father. I would actually be interested. See, I knew you'd that. like it. <laughs> I would. But I'm thinking, who but cares about Shy? I think you should have done that the other I way think around. That Shy is kind of interesting. I didn't think he was an interesting guy until I saw him riding up and down in that elevator in Manchester. You know when he came over <laughs> He's very to very arty. Yeah, that arty stuff. And I was like, actually, I don't know why. This is a little bit pompous, but I kind of like this, and I kind of like the guy. I don't. I really shouldn't. Because he's not actually been in any film that I like. You mm, like him Steven. just because he does weird stuff. Yeah. And you love a bit of weird. I like a bit of weird. And if he's playing his own dad, I think I could go with that. And what, was his dad abusive to him or what? I don't know. That's that's all I know. He poured honey all over him. He poured honey. Honey boy. <laughs> and that's the entire film. Just pouring yes. honey on Sheila Booth. 
<laughs> and uh, and yes, I'll watch that probably. Winnie the Pooh comes along. Pooh Bear came along to lick the honey off Sheila Booth. To make his lips move. Yeah. Anyway, I, I really don't give a fuck about that. Adam? Don't act like you don't care. I don't do really you? care. Exactly. You don't if it wasn't going to be made, I, I knew. I, that's what, that was my thing. I knew that Ben would think, oh, actually, you know I what? Would, I could live without. I could live without seeing it in my life. Who would you? What, well, I know what you two would rather see. But if you had Green Lantern or the Sheila Buff film, I'd go and see the Sheila. I should, film. I'd rather see the Sheila Buff film because I don't like Tom Cruise. Yeah, he's really annoying. Oh, yeah. I'm agreeing with him. Good luck. With but I'd probably see him. Enjoy um, that film. <laughs> but knowing it in life, I'd probably actually go see Green Lantern and not see the Shia LaBeouf. But I'd kind of rather. See, this guy just changes. changes I'm not, I'm not knowing saying this I would in life, I go see the Green Lantern. Yeah, but no, <laughs> because I mean, like, you have to watch it if you're going to watch all Justice League films. You can't just skip one out. Why are you watching all the Justice League films? They're good films. Oh, no, not actually. Yeah. See, look, see, you say things without I want thinking. them to be good. Yeah, you want them to be good and they're not. I like Batman. You don't. They're good but bad at the same time. Yeah. You hate it. He loves them too much. I love them, yeah. and I don't care that they're you bad. You love them because they're Batman. Still. I love them because they're still... So you admit that they're bad. bad? Yeah, yeah, I know. The, the ones they bring in out are bad, but like, Batman, Wonder, Batman, Wonder Woman wasn't bad. Batman versus Superman. Batman versus Superman wasn't bad. I loved it. We should do a podcast. You said it was we one of the best You said it was better than Dark Knight. No, I said it, it might be level with it when I first watched it. Come on, I did. son. And you know that's I don't, wrong, I don't believe it? that now. No. So, that moves on to trailers. We ready for trailers? Trailers, yeah. All right. Trailers. I don't live in a caravan, so why are you showing me that trailer crash? Okay, so we watched the trailer for Under the Silver Lake, which oh, yeah, had yeah. Andrew Garfield in it. He was a bit now, I quite like the look of this. I think I feel like it's going to be like a wacky kind of one, like Big Lebowski. Do you know where they do, it's a guy going on misadventures and like yeah. ending up in weird situations? That's what it kind of looks like from the trailer, and I, I kind of like that. I don't know. That whole thing of him getting stuff that you should, in real life, probably take you hours to get, and then something he'll look into a wall and he'll see something that gives a clue away, and he'll just end up doing that, and there'll be annoying little segments like that. About the whole film, I'm caught in the middle of the, both of them opinions. Yeah, I think yeah, it could it could have the charm of something like Big Lebowski, but then also I think it might have the possibility of irritating because it felt a little hipsterish yeah. at times. And I'm, I'm Garfield could be annoying sometimes. It might just yeah. be the trailer being fun and cut in a nice way. I think it was the way it was cut. But the thing that interests me most of all was that it's from the people who did It Follows. Yeah, and It Follows was good. It Follows was very good. That's what I was expecting it to be a horror film, though. Yeah. It wasn't a horror film. Yeah. They, they like set when it you up see like him look through that film. window and it goes... Mm. Yes, I know. And then they turn it into when Harry met wacky. Sally. Wacky. Well, it was a wacky little show. It was a wacky little trailer. I, don't, I won't see it. <laughs> no, I'll probably, I'll probably, I'm probably. i going to forget about it. Yeah. As soon as we finish this segment... it's going You to do find some random... Films for us to watch the trailers. Yeah, well, it's, it's good. good. It's good. I, we need a that, bit of variety. That one that we watched last week on last week's podcast, the one about the salesman, salesman who had a white voice. That was interesting, and unique. But again, which out of the two films would you rather go see? Probably this this one. Uh, I think I'd rather watch that one. I don't, oh, I don't love that one. I did quite like. It. He loved all the white voices. It seemed completely. It, it seemed completely. It's completely wacky. Where this seems like, like done to hear and it seems like it's been done before where that one there was did have a bit more originality about it. Maybe. Maybe. That'll be interesting when they both come out and see what they're actually like. I think I would like to see I think we should go see them both. Yeah, I'd, I would, I would actually be interested to see this one just to see what it's like. Uh, I will wait to see them both at home. I wouldn't go see them No, the not in the cinema. They don't feel not like cinema them. films. Seeing like a Netflix film. Yes, Annihilation. You know what we do have to watch? What? Hereditary. Which, remember that trailer? That's probably the best trailer we've ever watched. Oh yeah, the... yeah. And well, when was that one? And it, it's... You can't even remember it. You, I get the one with the, the, one with the doll's house. The horror. And it goes oh, yeah. into the doll's house. Oh yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah that's When's cool. That? I haven't like, I haven't heard that? anything after that trailer, so no. I don't know. I don't know that... if it's out. I don't know whether it's been out. I don't know whether it's coming out. If it gets released, it will be a Halloween release, won't it? Yeah, probably. probably. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was interesting. It was different. It was different, mm. which was good. So I, 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 as much as I didn't, wasn't massively won over by it, I want people to keep making films like that because at least it's doing something a bit yeah, fucking it's a bit different, isn't it? Zip right, next section. What is it? Ben reacts to a trailer. Hello, Ben. Are you going to react to this trailer? Yes, he's going to react to a trailer. What's the theme tune for that? Oh, no, no, that's it. Now. There's no theme tune. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be it now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Could make it. To that we'll name. snip it up now. See what happens. It. Hello, Ben. Are you going to react to this trailer? Yes, he's going to react to a trailer. 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 So right, today you're, you're reacting to Fantastic Beats, Beats, Fantastic Beats <laughs> by Skrillex, <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic Beats, The Crimes of Grindelwald. 
That's all Adam being a dick. Ben, have you seen the first Fantastic Beasts? I have. Piece? Good. With Hector Berman, and what it? did you think of that one? <laughs> I, did, I did quite like it, actually. Yeah, cool. That's what I like. I quite liked it as well. And I'm seeing, I'd am like to see what you think of this one. I So the thing that I know about, like at the end of Fantastic Beasts, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but if you haven't seen it, you should have by now, is the Johnny Depp appearance at the end. Yeah. Which I didn't yeah. realise, like, it was like, oh, that was a bit random. But now that, that I know that he's kind of meant to be the focus in this film. And I know that there's a lot of controversy about the fact that he's in it because people are saying, oh, he's uh, an abusive fuck, so he shouldn't be uh, in the film. J.K. Browning's endorsing this guy and all that. But it's like, uh... well, anyway, let's watch the trailer. The Crimes of Grindelwald. Here we go. It looks like Lord of the Rings so far. What's that? Hogwarts. Lovely to see. Very nice. Do, do, There's do. people appearing on the bridge. Whose voice is that? I recognise that voice. Jude Law. Eddie Redmayne's got such an annoying face. He really does. Is that Jude Law doing Scottish accent? Dumbledore. Oh, right. Oh. Oh, well, that was a bad line. They set it up for a great reveal of Dumbledore, and then he just said a shit throwaway line. Here's Johnny Depp, I think. I've had enough of all these creatures. That's what the film's about. I know, but the first one had it, and that was fine. <laughs> Don't need any more of them. There's four of them going to happen. Dancing around on the dance floor, on the cliffs of Dover, beasts under the sea, Sam Neill looking at the roof, bubbles in the circus. <laughs> they need to show Johnny Depp. They need to sell it with a bit more Johnny Depp. There he is. Can I tell you one thing? Tell us. Let me tell you one thing that I didn't like about that trailer, but yep. it's not to say that the film isn't going to be good. Yep, go for it. Because I'd probably like to see it. The studio yep. have bowed to the pressure of people saying Johnny Depp shouldn't be in this film. And they've, even though the fucking film is called Fantastic Beasts and whatever that is of Grindelwald, they've got a split second shot of him. Yeah, well, maybe he's mysterious. Isn't it? But he's not. He's not. We've, he was revealed in the first film, and everyone knows what Johnny Depp. A few more bits of him, so they've eliminated him and almost made it more about Newt and Dumbledore. And anyway, I'm. I think I'm a little sick of seeing more of, of uh, Eddie Redmayne in that role. Yeah, Newt Scaramanga is a very annoying character. He, well, he is a very annoying character, but this trailer really excited me because I felt like the first Fantastic Beasts was a bit. It was like felt separated from the Harry Potter universe. Yeah. But this one's like, oh, this actually looks like a Harry Potter film. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yes. I you see Hogwarts. You see, like, the Thestrals. What's that? The Thestrals, the, the bony horses. Remember those? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all, like, the magic. All them app apparating onto the, the bridge. Yes. It's all nice. That's it's all nice, nice Yeah, that's nice. It's, it's nice all, to see. It's all, it's all uh, a lot more like a Harry Potter film, which I like. But... This is meant to be a for a slightly older audience, is it? Than Harry Potter, would you yeah. say? Do you think Fantastic Beasts film for older audience or not? Yeah, I think it is. It's still the original Harry Potter audience, but they want to keep it They're exciting for kids. What that struck me as a child's movie. Well, it's still it's Harry Potter is still got the child, child element. Child yeah, but in a different way to the yeah. But what I mean is like that struck me as a PG as opposed to a twelve. And the last few Harry Potters were twelves. Mm. Well, they gradually get they gradually get. A, um, more violent, didn't they? As they go on, it's yes. almost. I like. I like. I like that with the Harry Potter films. How it starts with the children. It's almost like the age of the children is what age of the film you're getting. Yes, which I liked. Yeah, it's true. I yeah, I got nothing bad to say about it. I, I don't. I just didn't like that they didn't uh, put more Johnny Depp in that trailer. Yeah, uh, you're what standing you, up for Johnny Depp. What do you think? Corner, well, you? no, because here let's talk about it. What do we think about it, Johnny Depp? People saying that Johnny Depp shouldn't have been in this film, and that J.K. Rowling should have put really and said, it too much. because. I don't know enough about it, but apparently, apparently, his wife Amber Heard is that who it was? Yeah, she was in the Danish girl. She was beaten up. Was she? Yeah, she's a Danish girl. This was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Beaten up, yeah, like three or four years ago, yeah. or something like that. But it came out recently that he did it, and there's like video of him going nuts in a kitchen or something. And it's like, yes, it's bad, but in Hollywood, if you're going to eliminate the people who've beaten the shit out of women from Hollywood, you're going to lose half of the yep. fucking actors because you know Gary Oldman did it. Mm. Yeah, that's what his wife was saying when he won the yeah. Oscar. Gary Oldman done it. He won an Oscar. There's plenty of them. Bill Murray. Did you know that? Mm. That hurts. That hurts to hear. But many, many years ago, before way before Ghostbusters, but he still did it. Yeah, he did it as well. And it's like, well, what, well, come on. I, I it's Chris it's Brown, one of those things, isn't it? It's like, Cunt. what are you supposed to do? <laughs> it's they're still putting them in films. It's, it's always going to happen. It's about can you separate the art from the artist? And you can do it with music. Music's easier to do it with, I think, because people behave like dickhead. Musicians, for the most part, are all dickheads. You don't have to see a musician; you can just listen to them. And I know, but then arguably, like you're seeing when you see a musician who's a dickhead, you're still supporting that person. So you're hearing his music. So you're hearing a dickhead's music, right? But we still like it. But when you see a film like Johnny Depp, if he's a dickhead in real life, but he plays a role, you can still say that's a good role. Like Kevin Spacey, right? Mm. I've said this before. Kevin Spacey, it doesn't what he did is awful but 
doesn't make a damn bit of difference to all the characters he plays. He's still fu- he's an amazing actor. Yeah, doesn't change that in the slightest. Doesn't change that he's yeah. fucking amazing in Seven and whatnot. And and that's the same with this Johnny Depp thing. Like he's he's well in recent years he's not so good. Yeah, he's really, he does a lot of it now. stupid, stupid, doing shit. it for money. Yes, I like big Ed, bold characters. I like Edwards. Edward, yeah, Edwards and yeah. Edward. This is a hand. Edward, Edward. You need to watch Edwards. Bill Murray's in that too. Beating me yeah, up. Good. Bill Murray. No, he's he's uh, Bella Lugosi. Uh, Bella Lugosi. Yeah, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I love all I love all <laughs> Bella Lugosi's lines in that. Let's shoot this cocksucker. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 odd, isn't it? It's like. When this comes out, what you're supposed to hate every film they've ever done since yeah, then. I know. Mm. And then if it's a new film, so you just hate him for that film. Was he put in, in this film? film after the allegations came out, or did was they he already in the film and then the yeah. allegations came? Well, he was already in the first Fantastic Beast in the, in the final reveal, so it was like that was before the allegations came yeah. out. I think. Okay. But then you know, like Mark Mark Wahlberg uh, um, beat up that shopkeeper and blinded him while right? he was in his youth. Mm. Yeah, and the guy lost it, lost his eye or whatever it was, and like he's in fucking movies to this day, appearing on Graham Norton and stuff. People in the oh, oh, hey, when he talks, they're applauding him, and it's like, well, you make you got to make up your mind. Yeah. You, you're either we either as a society say this is getting very fucking philosophical, but we either as a society say, look, all of this lot can behave as appallingly as they want as long as they just make a good film, and yeah. you accept it across the board. Because the minute you start saying, well, don't put Johnny Depp in that because he beat his wife up. You become judge, jury, and execution on these things, and then yeah. you, you have to do it for everyone. No one is without sin in Hollywood; they're all fucking fucked. You need to resign yourself to the fact that everyone in Hollywood, for the most part, is an asshole apart from Tom Hanks. Agreed. Agreed. Tom yeah. Hanks is the only one who isn't. Yeah. What about if allegations came out about Tom Hanks? Would you be shocked? I would, but I, I wouldn't. I love Hugh Jackman as well. Hugh Jackman's done some filthy shit. Probably, <laughs> probably with those Wolverine claws. <laughs> but he, yeah. but he's, he looks like such a nice guy. You reckon? Yeah, I think so. Right, this actually leads us on to the feature of the week. I'm having a nap, and you guys carry on with this. The main event. Here is our feature topic, plus Adam might do a rubbish plot summary. Are you fucking serious? Tell us what the theme is for Adam, this week. Adam, what is the plot of this theme? The things we hate in movies. Like you see it in a you movie explain? and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, I hate this. But Adam, my just hate movies? Or anything to do with movies. The yeah. whole movie world. Wow, that was you, you really explained it well. Yes. It is. All right, my pet peeve is to do with movie posters mainly. Go on, tell us. What um, is your pet If you've got three people, three actors on the front of a poster and they have three names above the poster and they're not above the actor on the poster. They put them all the way wrong way round. I just know, put so the annoying. names yes, above is, the actor. It's that really is foolish. Annoying. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> why, like, why? When you design it, why do you go? Oh, let me put that there. It's, it, it's an especially oops. if it's free. It's not like well, the first name you read can be the big name. The middle one because it stands out the most. It's in the middle. Or the last one you read, you want it to have the big one. The big right, name. I tell you why they do that. I tell on. you why they do that. Right. Say the three of us are in a movie poster. Yeah. Yep. Like you said, and you got Ben, Adam, Paul from left to right on the movie poster in that order. Visually, that's how it looks, right? Okay, because they like for the framing of it, they want uh, a big guy, a little guy, and then a big guy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's a very little but, guy in the middle. Yep. Yeah. But when they were negotiating our contracts, it was like Adam, Adam's agent, put up the biggest fight and said, "No, I, he I, he needs to get first billing." So on the poster, your name has to come first because you, no, you are the top billing. It looks but wrong. On the poster, it looked wrong because you'd be but little, middle, big, big middle and centre. I would say that's still top billing. I'm just guessing. I'm agreeing with you. I'm I telling know. you what happens, son. But yeah, it is dumb. I agree. Fuck I all hate of Hollywood. It. <laughs> I hate it. And I'll, I'll I'll bring something out. Do you know what I hate? This to do with the marketing as well. Do you know when they bring out a sequel? Why the hell don't they make the covers similar to the the one before? So that they can actually go in order when you put them on the shelf. Ah. I hate that. We're talking visual shit again. Yeah. yeah. Why would they do that? Why don't they make it match the other ones? <laughs> because it's the distribution company. It's not always the same. It's ridiculous. Stop getting all technical with us. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Our point. I'm giving you answers. I'm the spokesperson for the fucking distribution companies here. <laughs> okay, what one do you hate then? Well, in terms, of, in terms of visuals speaking, I can't think of anything visually that, that I dislike in terms of marketing, but I'm going to talk about film... And film it. stuff specifically which I like what which I dislike and one of the biggest things that I dislike is in 
films <coughs> that are ho- kind of horror films, right? That have had this vibe, this feel, which is like really good, really good horror films mm-hmm. that get to the moment. Normally, I've got to say, when the the girl or the woman who's been the victim throughout most of the film finally has the chance to kill or destroy the yes. attack of the creature or whatnot, and it's been pretty serious, pretty good dialogue, pretty good story, and right before she kicks him out the window or shoots him with a gun, she says some shitty, cheesy, throwaway yes. line, which you never <laughs> fucking would in your life say. Like, I agree. Like, you're... T- well, even, even... Chill out. Do you know, one freezer. of the few times this works is Terminator, when Sarah Hamilton, Lynn Hamilton goes, you're terminated, fucker. That works. She says that right before she slaps a button. But, like, imagine doing that shit in real life. I know you wouldn't. Someone, If someone broke into your house and stalked you through the woods all night and whatnot, you haven't said a word to this this guy, and then right before uh, you're about to hang him from a tree with some rope, you go, hang around. <laughs> Wait, you wouldn't do it. Why would you do it? Who is it? Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. But they say all that shit. And, yeah, and I, I agree. And it, and it makes me mad because it's like, fuck, now I know that I'm watching a movie. I like to not know that I'm watching a movie and you do that stupid shit. I've got quite a few points about horror films, actually. Like, another one is when they have an opportunity to kill them, it's like, does, they've, they've like, oh, they smashed their legs out and they've fallen on the floor. Fucking smash their head in as well. Yes. It's like, they're going to chase you. They're not going to go, oh, he knocked me down. I better not chase them now. It's true. I hate that. Yeah, right? Okay. hate when they run upstairs. Yeah, so nice. That's stupid. There's a big jump screen coming up. You hear the music. 100%. Oh, my mate's just going to come along and put their shoulder hand on my shoulder really violently. They go, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> yeah, you motherfuckers. Afraid. Who does that? Why are you scaring people? And and it's not like they're going, oh, haha, I scared you. They yeah. just go, how are you doing? Yeah, I know. Out of and, and it's like, why are you like, saying that? Hey, so well. <laughs> yeah, like, well, people don't do that. People don't just suddenly grab people on the shoulder. Do you know what I thought you were going to say? Yeah, go on. And this is something that pisses me off about movies, but only because I've clocked this. And when I tell you both this, it's it will ruin, ruin it. your enjoyment yeah, of horror films, right? Exactly your point. Tense. Horror, fi- horror film. The music's building. Ding, yep. ding, ding. You're on edge. You're on edge. You're on edge. Let me tell you, while the music's playing, the suspenseful music's playing, nothing scary is going to happen. No. Nope. What will happen is the music will play. It stops. And it will stop. And it's in the silence. <laughs> yes. It will stop for about five seconds and then the scare. I know. Guaranteed. Put on any fucking horror film. Like as soon as yes. the music stops. Boom. There it is. Yep. I agree. The music's like, you're safe. It's you're obvious. Safe. It's just such an obvious editing tool, isn't it? Yes. And you know what else I hate? This is my last point about horror movies. Yeah. When when uh, someone falls over and they're crawling and they're like, get away. Yeah. And they're like, just get up and run away know, again. Run. You haven't hurt your leg. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and why do they never try shit? Like if they get kicked on, on the, on if they get grabbed by the ankle, why do they never try kicking out with the other foot or anything like that? They just give in. They're like, <laughs> just fucking kick or something <laughs> or just bend over like that and go, oi, like that. <laughs> smash, smash the ankle. Don't fucking just. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell, man. <laughs> Ridiculous, ridiculous but horror movies you could be here all night with I know, wrong with I know. let's go let's go for stuff that's not to do with horror movies okay this is an annoying one that I hate yeah. alright when uh, <laughs> in any action film or any kind of film that involves guns oh, right, I know what you're going to say someone to come up to there's the, there's the villain right or it could not be the it could be the villain with a gun yeah. he approaches someone who he's intended to kill or intended to scare about killing pointing the gun at them Oh, I'm really, I'm really, it's really intense right now. Let me cock my gun a little bit after I've approached them with a gun, just to scare them. Yes. It's like, if you wanted to shoot them, the gun should have already been cocked, because you should be ready. Mate, that happened in Tomb Raider when yeah. we watched it, and I thought that. Yeah. When Walter Goggins floor. did it. No, when Walter like, Goggins had the gun. So they could have jumped on him, and be like, oh shit, cock that gun, quick. I know. Why would you cock it at the last minute? It's because, because they like to make some clever statement, and then go, yeah, well, I, I, say, you're, I say you're a dead meat, and then pull it back. <laughs> Yep. It's like, yeah, you're right. Why, why, why are you holding it like that then? Because if someone did attack you, you'd be doing fuck you. Oh, fuck, fuck. And, it's, and that's exactly the same with the horror movie thing. The, the, the tense music. Oh, let me take the clip. Do you know what also annoys, <laughs> annoys me with guns in films is when they, they aim a gun at someone's head for too long and then you know immediately that person is not getting shot. Yes. yes. If you're going to kill, you do it. It would be in the moment. You don't hold it there for 30 seconds. After a time, you're like... Either someone's going to come along and save you at the last possible second when you're actually about to get shot, or yeah. they're going to change their mind. It's going to happen over when the gun is held at your head for too long. They only, they only, ever, they only ever get shot when it's a it's a, a shot of the person's back of the head, the per- and you see the person in front with a gun pointed, and then it zooms forward towards a person holding the gun. Then they shoot. Yeah, that's when it happens. 
And you can't yeah. see someone get their head blown yeah. out. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't you don't want to bring that rating up on the film. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. So they just shoot them then. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so obvious. Yeah. And it's not and normally also in that situation, there's another rule where they hold a gun at their head for ages and then the person suddenly drops the gun and again the music cuts out. Mm. There'll be music for that whole time when the gun's at their heads, and then they say, Oh, do you know what? I'm gonna let you live. And they drop the gun. <laughs> And the music cuts out for five yep. seconds, and then they just raise it and shoot again. Yep. When the music cuts out, you know something else is yep. going to happen. Yeah, obvious have a musical. Isn't it? I mean, it's safe in a musical. Highly ridiculous films. Okay, this is something else I hate, and I know that Ben knows this because we talked spoke about it before. When they're putting a film together, editing it, they realise, oh, you know what? This is not the way that I wanted this this film to look, or the way the way the scenes are playing. Yeah. So I'm going to reverse this shot just so that it looks like. Instead of looking away, I want them to look at the person, and then you just see their eyes go flutter, like because they reverse. cannot make eyes look like they're going forward, backwards, because it true. never works, and it's so obvious, and I see it every time I've it happens in the film, it. and it brings me out. It brings me out the film. Uh, it's true because when you close your lids, normally, right, if you just do that, you blink. Close your lids. Is that what you call them? Close your lids. <laughs> yeah, close your lids. <laughs> If you reverse that manoeuvre, it's strange. I never noticed it until you pointed yeah. it out. It all, I see it all It was the in the bridge or something. I see it, yeah. And, it, I know, and, and immediately it. it brings me out the film like, oh, they, this has been edited. I don't know. <laughs> like, I know true. it's not real, yeah. but it's just like, it makes it... Like, they did it... I know I know you hate The Walking Dead anyway, but they did it in The Walking Dead. Yeah. And, uh, That's just cheap anyway. There was, there was a shot. This wasn't even to do with eyes. This was just obvious. There was a shot of... I can't remember where it was going. For, it, was, it was zooming in or zooming out. But it was on a cabin and there was loads of zombies around it, all scratching the walls. They realised, oh, I want the shot to be going forward rather than backwards. And they're all scratching backwards. <laughs> and it's like, how does no one... Wait, you think no one's going to notice this? But that, but the editors think, oh, we've got away with that. Yeah. Because they think no one's going to look closer yeah. to that. But I did it. I see. Of course. you you got the fresh I have eyes. the vision. Let me tell you something. What I don't like in films is when someone holds a conversation... That they would never, as in, prolongs having a conversation for longer than they would in reality. Here's an example, right? Yep. You are drunk in in Sainsbury's, and I'm your dad, and I have to come and collect you. And I'm and you. So in the film, in what would happen in reality is I've come to Sainsbury's. I go, what the fuck's going on? And and I'm going, that. What, what are you doing? Why why would you do that? And get you in the car? Why the fuck would you do that? What's going on? T- tell me, right? In a film, this is what happens. Your son's drunk in, in the supermarket. All right, turn up at the supermarket, see you drunk, look at you like this. <laughs> then it cuts to you in the living you know, room at the home podcast. later People that can't night. can't see how you just looked at me. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I gave him a dodgy look. And then it cuts to later at, at home that evening. And then I say, what were you thinking? Yes, I what, did. Yeah. What, have you not had that conversation in the last two hours? I, how could you do they that? They were silent in the car. Silent the whole time, yeah. <laughs> And and this is the other one. Is what, in that same sort of situation where it's like, I'm uh, I'm going steady with Lisa, and then an hour later in the car, I can't believe that you're going steady with Lisa. Like, what the fuck? You would have the conversation there and then. You wouldn't prolong it, man. You're not aware that you're in a movie. Let's have this conversation in another scene. Oh wait, Sorry, you want to talk about Lisa? Let's go out to the park so we can have this conversation. Because you can't walk and talk. Yeah, I've noticed that before. Did you think it's the time difference? Is like. Why would you wait that long? I know. <laughs> okay, I've got another one. Uh, so the big villain in the film, the hero has been captured by the villain, right? What does that villain want to do for the whole film? Kill that, kill that hero, right? Yes. No, he's not going to kill him. He's going to explain his plan yeah. all along, of course. right? Because obviously he wanted to know the plan. He's not going to kill him, so it wouldn't matter anyway that he's told him his plan. Yeah. Why do they even do that? Why are they talking about his plan? And then it normally gets their downfall because they know the plan. It's true. Yeah. It's got you very fired up. There's also <laughs> another thing that comes to that is when you're watching an action film, at the very beginning of the film, in the first five minutes, you've got your hero who's obviously on all the posters in all the trailers you've watched for this film, like if you went to see Tomb Raider, and the first five minutes... She's on the floor and then someone's got a, like an axe to their neck. And you're like, obviously she's not going to die now. Well, that's my big problem with all yeah, I know. superhero sort of films. It's, it's like, not even superhero, just g- general films. It's Any like, hero don't film. put your, like, you might put him in danger to have the action scene, but you're obviously, the person is obviously not going to die in the first like, five minutes of the film in the opening is sequence. There, is there one film you can think of where the person they build the film around, the one action person they build the film around, 
dies in like the first half of it. I'm not talking like Pulp Fiction, John Travolta style. I mean like one person. I can tell you, I can tell Godzilla, you one that's not the Brian first person dies. Like yes, I know, but that, that was fucking hugely disappointing. Well, yeah. effective. Um, not the first half an hour, but that's been killed that you think, oh God, they actually killed him with no country for old men. And you don't even see his death. And oh, it's just yeah. like, oh, Broden, he's yeah. dead. Jenny was very angry about that. Yeah, she, I love that. She was like, why the hell wouldn't you show that? Yeah. It's so, that's a brave, brave move. I know. It was a brave move. It was a brave move. Because it shows. It's not, the film's not even about you. And that's what upset um, Tommy Lee Jones at the end of that. Yeah? Very much so. Yeah, but it's just... Okay, like, how about how about Brad Pitt in Burn After Reading? Oh, uh, yeah. But, but I mean like a hero. He's a not hero the main character, character though, is he? He's a, kind of a side... I think he's probably the main character. Mm. I can't she is. What's her name? Francis. Very well. Dorman, you're, you're, and look, the, the common thing is they're both Coen Brothers films you've just mentioned. Mm. And they like to spin shit, don't they? Yeah, it's nice. That also happens in Fog. Fresh. Yes. Oh, it's a film with Henry Cavill in and Bruce Willis. And Bruce Willis on the front cover of the, the, the cover mm. to promote the film. And he actually died in the first 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Six Cent. No. <laughs> That's a good one, though. Is He's one. dead. Yeah. That is a good one. Yeah, he is dead. Speaking of which, I saw that Shyamalan put a picture up on Twitter that Glass has just finished filming in Brazil. Yeah. I can't wait for that film. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's I love Unbreakable, though. I like Unbreakable, and and uh, Split was fine, mm. and I'm not sure that he's going to do a very good job of, of bringing those two worlds together. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. We'll see. Be some weird twist. I know. That, that's what I hate. Here's what I hate. Yeah, go on. About people around movies is when someone says to you, there's going to be a great twist in it. If you haven't seen it, it's like, oh, you haven't seen it? Oh, there's a great twist in it. Don't tell me that. What, when people? Yeah, if so people, people, if people, yeah okay. when people say, oh, it's got a great twist. It's like, if you haven't seen, all right, I'm not going to name the film, but there's another Shyamalan film mm -hmm. out there, which it was early in his career, and it wasn't really known that every, pretty much every film he was going to do was going to have a twist. And mm -hmm. I went into this film, and I was watching it, and I was enjoying it, and then... In the last five minutes, the whole fucking film changes because of something that happens. And I'm like, fuck, that's amazing. But if someone had said to me before, there's a great twist coming at the end, the whole way through that film, I'd have been like second guessing everything and thinking, oh, yeah. it's this, it's this, it's this. And that ruins the enjoyment. It's better to it, I agree, yeah, yeah. Do you hate it when people bring popcorn to the cinema as well? Clearly. <laughs> that's the thing you hate about the movies. I hate the movie. I hate the movie going experience when you're with other people. Yeah. If you're with your own people, it's like if I was in that cinema with just you two, you could eat as much as you want because it's kind of fine because I know it's just you two. But if it's other fucks that I can't dictate to, yeah, I hate it. I've got another one. It's no gooder. No, I hate superhero films. Yes. All of them. any superhero film where they put eye makeup on. <laughs> well, that's Batman. I know, but it's like, why would? It's like, why would you put eye makeup on? <laughs> You're not going to be standing in the mirror just before, quick, there's a crime. Let me just put this eye makeup around my eyes. <laughs> you don't even need it. It's not. It's only for the look of the costume. Eh? It wouldn't even matter. It's only for the film. It's about blending. I know. And I've seen, I've seen like, I watch Arrow and the Flash TV series. Yes. And there's, there's ones where they have the eye makeup on and they take the mask off and the eye makeup's gone. Oh, maybe it's yeah. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, that, maybe it's just a really good mask. Batman. Yeah. Um, in Michael Keaton's Batman, he had the the black rings, and then yeah, you're right. When he rips the mask off at the end of Batman Returns, he ain't got the black rings. Oh, that's I don't annoying. Think. Do you know what annoys me in the film as well? We say when it's going to go back to Tomb Raider as well. When they see there's an object in that's quite crucial to the film, yeah, and then they, it's quite obvious. Like when she left it behind, and you're thinking, what's that going to be? What's that going to be? And it just never comes back again. Yeah, it's, it's something they make a big point of that they just never follow up. That's more more like that's lazy writing. But it's, it's not. It's probably not. It's probably actually editing. They probably just cut it. That's true. Yeah. It, but then cut they all cut of it. That. Yeah, they cut, cut all of it. it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But like, it's so the whole time in that film, you're like, and then at the end of the film, it doesn't come back to that. And you're like, well, that's an unanswered question. At least you're a bit disappointed. You'll probably you'll probably see that it's probably you know, something like they she left the item, and in that when she left the item, you see her running out the door. I thought right? she was going to turn around. They didn't around. have another shot of her running out the door. Yeah, they thought, okay, we don't actually need this the scene of it coming down later down the line. True. So we we'll just cut that. And it won't really matter. And hopefully no one will notice. Yeah, but you're yes. going to cut the little bit where it rolls underneath the bed. Mm. Did you yeah. ever notice we talk about a lot about Tomb Raider things you don't like? We talk yes, about I three know. or four times. That's why I give it's it to you. It's a good reference. Um, here's one of the things I don't like. This is very personal. And it's one of my biggest hates in movies. Mm -hmm. And it's always the most boring part of any movie. And you two are going to go, well, oh, you're just going to not agree. But it's whenever there's a sex scene or whenever a girl takes her clothes off. Because let me tell you, right? 
Hollywood thinks that shit sells. Mm-hmm. There, no matter what jokes you make, Adam, about, oh, yeah, she might get her tits out and stuff like that. <laughs> you don't go to see a movie. No. You don't pay 12 quid to see a movie because you think Jennifer Lawrence or something is going to take her tits you know, out. You know you're not. She's not going right? to do it anyway. But that's why, like, stop putting it in fucking movies. And also, you're wasting minutes with a sex scene. No one's watching it going, oh, wow, I've never seen a sex scene before. Fuck, this is so well shot. Fuck it. Leave it out. If you want to suggest that they've had sex, just go from the point where they're flirting. They kiss, right? That's it, right? The point where you have that first kiss, cut to the morning after, right? Yes, yeah, do that quite a bit. show me kissing, fumbling with clothes, unbuttoning, sliding your hands in it. Oh, I don't want to see that. It's dull fucking shit. There's only one film that it works in. I'm going to say one as well. Go on. The Room. Shades of Grey. The Room. Oh, well. <laughs> Do you know the one film it does work yeah, in? Yeah, go on. And it actually has relevance to the story. Yeah. Terminator. When Linda okay. Hamilton, had, yeah. when, when Sarah Connor has sex with Carl Reese, that's important to show. Surely they could just show them the morning after as well. No, yeah, but that was it was more about, like, because that was a beautiful line. It was like, I travelled through time for you. And then they start kissing. Having sex lasts about... 30 seconds, the Terminator music plays, and then she has the unborn son waiting in her at the end. Wonderful. But cut all that shit out. Why do you need to see tits all the time? Yeah, true. It is kind of a cheap gimmick. Imagine they flipped it and it was a dick in every film. Would you like it? Don't know. Okay. He he was ready for it. Adam would be ready. He was interested. He was. Yeah, but you do you you say, you never know, it's going to, like, I don't know, it does, it is kind of like. It is just a cheap get- gimmick to fill five minutes of a film. I know, and it, but it makes me disappointed every time I see it. Not that I'm approved, for fuck's sake. I'm not approved about it, but it's just like, come on, man, we, we've evolved beyond this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's we don't need it. to yeah. see the tits all the time. What about in Devil's it's, Rejects? It's movie execs thinking well, all the men want to so see it. True. The men want to see it, it's going to bring the it's gonna bring the men in. See, Devil's Rejects, which he just said, it's true, there's a lot of nudity in that throughout, but it fo- it fits in with the overall dirty feel yeah. of the film. It kind of lends itself it's to not, it. It's not like a sexualized nudity no it's uh, it's more like a disgust like oh my god this is disgusting a vulnerability yeah yeah I'm trying to think of an example where tits was totally unnecessary think of an example where tits was unnecessary mm. it's like why is the topic oh, it's not... probably a lot but we just can't any, any comedy film they they probably just get them out for no reason yeah they'll be at a party and American ev- Pie they'll be at an American Party and everyone will be topless yeah Ameri- yeah American Pie there's a, what is it Um, it's a film where is it Harold and Kumar one of those films oh yeah and they go into a party and everyone's naked in the party. Silly. Are they it weird? never happens. No, never it's happens. all women. No, never. Yeah, all women. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not having it anymore. Okay, one more. Tell me what I got for me. Yeah. And that's my lot. Um, I hate when they only do two of a film. It's like so really? it's messy most. Well, about if the first film... Like, <laughs> make three of them. What about if the first film's really good, the second one... Is terrible. Would you then want to make the third one still? Just make it. What's an example of Just two films that drives you mad? Because um, I haven't followed on. Ace Ventura One, Ace Ventura Two. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Get the trilogy. We need the trilogy. <laughs> no, let's think of a good blockbuster. Um, oh, Kill Bill One and Kill Bill Two. But they are made supposed to making Kill Bill Three, but it's just never. Yeah, but they no shouldn't need... have made the first two. <laughs> but Kill Bill isn't part. It's part one and two. It's not. It's still two. Films. It's two it's separate, separate it's a... things. It's quite. Mm. They are, but they aren't at the same time. It's two separate films. They... What about when we go and see Best Friends, <laughs> one and two? You're going to be mad that he's not got Volume Three of Best yes, Friends. It's terrible. <laughs> see, terrible. Mm. What about the Kingsman. No, you didn't like the first one. No, I don't care. Nick's and A. They can burn those films. Yes, they definitely can. Uh, but that's just me. That's my OCD. Yeah. I like a trilogy. I like to see the three. What if I make four? Yeah, it's fine. Like anything off, anything then they, after, then anything off the two is fine. Here's, here's something I hate, and I noticed it yesterday. When you've got a film with British actors, mm-hmm. but the British actors don't use their real British accent, no. and they posh up the British. Yeah. It's like, stop fucking doing this. It's because no one else in the world can understand what a British accent is. But like, do you know what? Like. Our voices, our three voices, you would never hear them in a film. No. I've never heard of Maybe in a British film. It's either... Yeah. Yes, yes, that's what I think. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Or this. Come on, mate, what are you talking about? Yeah, I know, yeah. Go. Where's my apple? Oh, where's my apple? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a Tomb Raider reference, everyone. Yes. You want to see that film? <laughs> I know, it's either Cockneys or Plums in Your Mouth. Yeah. It highly, I hate it. Highly annoying. And Kira Knight is the fucking worst. Really. Yeah. Her British accent. No, stop talking like that. And if you talk like that in Britain... 
I don't want to know you. <laughs> I don't want to know you. No. <laughs> you don't talk like that in South London, bruv. Where I come from, no one talks like that. No, no one, one talks, talks to like each other. Anyway. You talk like that? Never. You talk like that? No. This is my normal voice. I never talk any different. I oh. don't want to hear posh. I don't want to hear it. I, I disconnect with it. Only posh you do, the posh wang. <laughs> yes, whatever that is. <laughs> You would and know. Posh Had to bring it down. Had to bring it down. <laughs> Cut that out again. Here's to our family and friends listening. <laughs> now then. Right, that's all mine. Is there any more? Yes, I wanted to say another thing yeah, on that. On. Tell me another the, um, Oh, What was I saying about the accent thing? It was it was related to the accent thing. You were saying about accents. <laughs> broke, my, broke my flow. <laughs> I can't remember now. I don't think I've got any more. I don't think I've got any more. What about a film's too long and it doesn't need to be too long? Does that annoy you? Nowadays, I get put off watching a film at home if it's when a, I see the runtime is like hours. over two hours. Yeah, which I never thought I'd be like that, but it's like sometimes I just. Watch and sometimes you watch films and you're like, "This doesn't warrant being over two hours." No. Yeah, you could cut a good twenty minutes of it out. Yeah, just speed and it all up a bit. But see, that's why people are. That's because people are like watching TV shows now, and they're used to seeing things in like an hour installment, like, and they get so much story in an hour. People are like, why are you spending two hours, two and a half hours unnecessarily on that? Mm. Like, These are some films, right, that I've got in my Blu-ray collection that I've had for like well over a year, possibly over two years, that I just haven't watched because they're too long. Blues Brothers. Really? It's two and a half hours. Is it? You gave me your DVD of it, then you bought me the Blu-ray of it, and I still haven't watched it at two and a half hours. Really? Is it two and a half hours? Yeah. Mm. At Dances with Wolves, three hours. Spartacus, three hours and something. Avatar, even though I've already seen it at the cinema, but... I never even want to put it back on because it's like, fuck, that's a long commitment. The only long films that I would easily go to would be the Godfather films, Scarf Lord Man. of the Ring films, and Scott. Goodfellas. Yeah, no, no, I know they're there, but I mean, in, in terms of like a long film yeah. that's like really... With well, those films, it's not a film that you put on as well. It's a film you have to dedicate time to. Yes. It's like you have to say, okay, I'm going to watch I'm gonna watch it tonight. You don't look for your collection, oh, I'm going to watch that tonight. Yeah. You have to preempt it at some point in the day, a bit further on. Yes. Agreed. I just watch anything. Apart from Das Boot, that's the longest film ever and it wasn't <laughs> worth it. Do you know what I hate nowadays with films? No, I don't. Watching anything on DVD. Yeah. I cannot do it. I can't engage with it anymore. Honestly, it's like, it, it, I'm so spoilt now that if something isn't out on Blu-ray, I just don't buy it. I'd rather not have it. Mm-hmm. Then watch it on DVD now. That's such a snobbish thing to say. I've got a lot. Like, it's same with the time length. I've got a lot of DVDs that I've had for like maybe five years. I haven't watched them because they're on DVD. I know. But then there's certain films that are never going to come out on Blu-ray, so that you need to have, if you want them, you need to have it on DVD. Mm. Stream them online with HD probably. No, because if they don't have a Blu-ray transfer, they won't be HD. Harry and the Hendersons. To see old films. No. Yeah. Great film. Keanu. Keanu. Oh, in fact, they must be available on HTC. I don't get it. Keanu, right? Have you seen that? I haven't seen it yet. You will like it very much. Mm. It's good. It's, it's John Wick piss take, but from Key and Peele. Yeah. Okay. And they do it rather than that his his dog is killed, they get a kitten and the kitten is kidnapped by Method Man. <laughs> Fucking fuck, great film. But Is it actually can, great or is it No, no, terrible, it is. No, great. it's funny. It's, re- it's It is really funny. It's good. Them two are good, Key and Peele. Mm. But um, that is only available on DVD and... I got it for, for Jenny's birthday because she wanted to see it. It's like, well, the only option I can buy is that way. Yeah. And it's like, but that must be available HD streaming. So why not? When was it made? It Recently. A year yeah. or two ago. I imagine it was on Blu-ray. That's weird. Anyway, I'm a snob like that. And I noticed it when I was trying to watch. I'm watching Homeland at the moment mm. on 4. It's not HD. Have you noticed this? Yeah. You stream it HD probably, I suppose. No, I don't I haven't even started watching it yet. Have you watched Homeland? No. Oh, you haven't watched Homeland? Right. I haven't started watching this season yet. Well, Good. Have you got any 4K ones? What's this from? R-E-S-C-U-E Rescue A Society I recognise that. Mm, I'll leave you with that. <laughs> you're going to wreck your brain, mate. You, I, think it's you, more the, I think it's more the tune than what you're saying. No, it's not. It's the whole song. Well, I don't know then. R-E-S-C-U-E Rescue A Society What it means to me. No, it's not that. Never mind. Just say it. No, I won't tell what you. What is it? We're no, going to no. let the name someone on the podcast. Matt, someone it. on the podcast. If you know what that song, what film that song's from, comment below. And you get a free feature next week. Yes. You get a free cod. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Matt will fill it. And a free copy of Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Right, we're moving on. 
Is everyone happy? Yep. Yeah, very good. Huh? Let's move on to what we've been watching. I've been watching you get undressed. Jesus. If you want to find out what we've been watching, Big Boy? Oh, yeah, Tommy. Double the heart right now. So I've watched uh, Ricky Gervais' Humanity. On Netflix, you watched it, did you? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something, Adam. This is, you might find this interesting. That was recorded in Hammersmith, and I was at that recording. Were really? you? Yes. Yeah. I saw Mick Barry at it. That's good. Beforehand. Did you say hello to him? Yeah, we said hello. Lovely. Had to catch up. Very good. Do you, you know what? what? No one should. No one should know who Mick Barry is because he's actually uh, a friend. Yeah, so yeah. he's not a famous person. He's not a famous person. No, <laughs> just an internal reference. What did um, you think? It was good, but I couldn't get over his trainers the whole time I was watching it. I can't remember what his trainers. He's wearing were like. some like A6 running trainers and terrible gene combination. But it was very funny. It was very funny. It's also, you're laughing at it, but you feel like you shouldn't be laughing at it though at the same time. I liked it. I liked that he was talking about it in that way as well. It was yeah. like, fuck it. It's the best bits of the part where he goes on about stuff he does on Twitter. No, the best bit. and It like, was the, the bit mo- with the wig. Yeah. When he goes about his uncle's wig. The best bit was the most outrageous bit was about like why he doesn't have kids and then like if he had kids he would oh, well, the ad- bit of the baby adopt one the- from Africa and then be like... <laughs> you should be grateful just- for... And it's mean you shouldn't be laughing, the though. And stuff, I know, but it was, it was so close to the bone, but it was fucking funny. It was very funny that night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you look back night. on it and you're like... No, no. On that topic, because they're on Netflix, I watched that new Chris Rock. Oh, Tambourine. Tambourine. I watched that one as well. Didn't like it at all. Not funny. Uh, maybe a couple of laughs. Yeah, I felt... A couple you, of laughs. I watched like, that one as well. It's you've bit- passed it, mate. <clears throat> and it's sometimes it's because obviously it's a black comedian and sometimes they make references that you probably don't understand you don't understand it then they make references and cultural references that you don't understand yeah. especially with being in America as well yes yes it's all that kind of I just didn't like it this is the difference right when you watch a stand up comedian they can be offensive and stuff but you still you kind of like them and the, and the yeah. stuff they're saying Chris Rock like halfway through his set talks about the fact that he just cheated on his wife so much mm. and then the whole second half of the set is based around jokes on the fact that he cheated on his wife and it's like yeah, it was you're right so you're cracking jokes about this and we're meant to be laughing with you while yeah, your wife odd. is like in the middle of a divorce in the middle of a divorce and all that shit yeah, it's like no one, no one thinks you're cool because you yeah you got shit loads of money yes you could sleep with everyone the other night people would be applauding you if you didn't because it makes you a better man not the fact that you slept Richard with been on about having a lot of money and his money quite a bit as well I know in a more of a funny way like yeah it's... in a funny way anyway that's the stand up that seems very odd that's the stand up I bet everyone was laughing everyone was laughing everyone was having a whale of a time of course they were. and they're cutting to the audience going ha 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 ha, ha, ha. I totally slapping I totally relate yeah yeah although they weren't talking like that let me tell you <laughs> but it's something like Chris Rock you've seen him I don't know you've seen him quite a bit like he's not yeah. really faded but then the Dave Chappelle ones as well it's kind of it's something new and refreshing because yeah. he spent so long away, away. and he and went to Africa for a long time and then he came back and it's only like was why like, are you holding your hands like an intellect I don't know like, <laughs> just bouncing them together he's bouncing his fingertips off what, it, themselves like, this, oh! like uh, Mr Burns yeah <laughs> excellent <laughs> punch over like this <laughs> Smithers go away and get two um, yeah so that was just the stand up corner yeah. hour Nice. Yeah, yeah, we haven't really talked about stand up before. No. Lovely. Well, you I, I tell you what I watched. Yeah, go on. Something that you recommended. I can't remember if you recommended it a couple of podcasts ago or if it was in WhatsApp, but I watched the documentary Jinx. Yeah. Which I can't remember which if you talked about sure this about. thing. No, we haven't. We haven't spoke about it. I told you in person. Yes. Not in person, via WhatsApp. Other social media apps. Are yes, available. via social media. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. But then. I, I just didn't... It was six hours, six, six hour long episode documentary about a man who is accused of killing some people. And it was six hours when it could have been two hours. If it was two hours, it would have been good. I li- I liked how they set, set up the story. It was almost like creating a narrative and then you can't get, get you liked, into the story. You I, just, like, I like it. You liked all the burping. And each episode was almost like the different element of the case and it was cool. It, I mean, it was good. Is it set up like Making a Murderer then? No, but that's the thing. I've th- Making a Murderer, like you said, when I asked you how's it compared to Making a Murderer, you said, uh, no comparison, this is a million times better. But for me, Making a Murderer is a million times better. Nah. They, I, that, that Making a Murderer was like, this is amazing. And then at the end, you're like, why do I watch that? No? Really? Yeah. No, like, it, kind of, it kind of fell flat. You invested like, in the character. The end. You during, invested at the, the end, it was like... Yeah. And, and you almost felt for him in the end. And like, by the end, know. it's like, are these people to create this really, narrative but... themselves? They, they're like, whose side are they on? What what you think it was it was fiddled? Yeah, the documentary because it's not. I like I like how 
with that, it's all focused on this one guy who's actually taking part, and yeah. you just realise, okay, this guy's actually fucking up in this documentary and stuff he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting. Well, with that, it it's like this is a third per- third party who's just talking about what's happened. I guess. I guess. But basically, Adam, it's about this guy who's who's basically gone into this, do- asked this guy to make a documentary about him, who's who been convicted, well not convicted, he's been accused of killing three separate people, right? And it's his story of how he got to where he was, and he's never been, he's never been um, convicted of any of them. Okay, so what is and, it? And it's like, it's almost like he's setting himself up for this fall. Yes. Is it a bit like when you look back at the old OJ Simpson ones after the trial's been, and he's then talking in books and stuff about how he would have done it how he would have done it and it's almost like okay that's a bit too a bit too it was a to... little bit like that he was talking very openly and brazenly about everything what who made it Jamaica. Oh, it's HBO HBO yeah. and the guy who created the documentary actually made a film about the guy and that's how he got Ryan Gosling that's, and that's how he got the documentary yeah what, what, what film was that I can't remember what it's called no Alone With Me or something like that mm. So after that film, he got the the guy got in contact with him and said, "I want to clear my name. Let's make a documentary." Yes. Okay. Right. Brilliant. I loved it. Well, Adam, watch for yourself. I enjoy. Good. Very lovely. Right. I watched Darkest Hour. Okay. Oh yeah, you did. And and I loved it better than Dunkirk. Are you joking? Yeah, I liked it better than Dunkirk. Are you fucking? Yeah, joking? I really enjoyed it. You didn't like Dunkirk too much, though, did you? No, I didn't. There was something about Dunkirk that I didn't. It didn't like gel with me. I haven't seen it yet. Still, yeah, I very much enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story. I liked how they played. How he played Churchill. What did you like about it? Is it? It was just interesting. I just. I really liked how how Churchill was portrayed in it. Do you like Churchill? I no. I've never liked Churchill. I've never thought I really like Churchill. Obviously, I never knew what his personality is like. So I just liked how they portrayed his personality. Um. Here's something that I've heard about a film. Yep, it's probably all fabricated. What? Is that what you're going to say? Well, one thing definitely is that the big big criticism about it is apparently there's a scene where he rides on the underground. Yeah, which is... Which, and he's talking to all the passengers. And which he, I saw and I was like, that's obviously... But apparently happened. that's like, he never actually went on the underground and spoke to passengers, but he did go around London a lot talking to people and he was apparently very invested in actually speaking to members of the public. And I thought that was just apparently that was just the way that they showed it. Really the thing is, in the I, ain't, I ain't interested in Ch- Churchill. That's it. Mm. That's why I don't really want to say. Neither was I. I'm sure, I, that, I'm I sure Gary Oldman does a very good uh, performance of him. Did he deserve an Oscar? Yeah, he did a good job. Who did he beat? Oh, Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, a guy from Get Out. Uh, high praise to beat Daniel Day Lewis in his final fucking film. Mm. Yeah, but he's got enough Oscars, hasn't he? Yeah, well, that would be his last last one. Like bow out. Yeah, but that's give him like could be like Gary Oldman's first though. Oscar. Well, Gary Oldman... It's a bit like, here you go. I think it's more of a sympathy, like, here you go, it's like, your first Oscar. Like Leonardo DiCaprio's, yeah. like Martin Scorsese's. It probably is. Yeah. Al he should have got it. He should have got it for Mason Verger and Hannibal. Mm, that was good. Wonderful. Yeah. Quite stupendous, that one was. Yeah. There's something else that I've seen, and I fucking can't remember what it was. It's killing me. I'll tell you my other one while you wait. Go on. Go on. Coco. Did you cry? I didn't cry, but I was, I was like... Did you watch Inside, it with Zoe? I felt the inside like, oh, this is nice. Did you watch it with Zoe? No, I was watching mine. Okay. She, Be- was, she wasn't one. interested. <laughs> she wasn't even interested. Um, yeah, I've heard good things about it. I've heard it's very comparable to a, a film called Day of the Dead that was also animated last year. But uh, I heard a song from it and it sounded very sad. Yeah. It's, it, it, I, I won't say anything about the film, but yeah, the song, <laughs> the song is sad for many reasons. Because dies. the way it's in, interpreted in different ways in the film. Oh, yes. And you re- and you realise the true interpretation. What film would you say is better, Coco or Darkest Hour? What would you give? Co- Co- I'll watch Coco again. What would you mm. give it out of ten? Nine out of ten. Would you give Darkest wow. Hour out of ten? Eight. That's an eight. Probably an eight. So you feel, you gave three billboards. Yeah, seven, I gave, yeah, eight. I did give it an eight because I gave Shape of Water a nine. And you gave three billboards seven, didn't you? Yeah. Good lord, this guy. <laughs> and you it's gave, my eight, taste. You gave an eight as well, didn't you? Yeah. Fucking hell! So you, re- so your least. What did you give Black Panther? Seven. As and as much as you hated Black Panther, because I don't care what you say, you, really, you took against it. I didn't hate it. Your, it. It was. I didn't hate it. I just, you I just took against it. it. 
Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's, I took against it. Yeah. But that's because the plot wasn't strong enough. No, Listen, no. this is just a superhero. I'm plot. losing this battle. Yeah, I know. This is the uh, best film that I've seen this year. What is? Three Billboards. Yeah, I think it is. I think the best film I've seen in a while. It's his worst film of the year so far. That's not. Oh, yeah. Tomb, Tomb Raider was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't care. That doesn't even go on the list. So, in your mind, Sam Rockwell shouldn't have won Best Supporting Actor. No, because oh, that's the only reason I liked it. Cause oh, yeah, that's Sam true. Rockwell. What about, do you reckon she should have won Best Leading Actress? Frances McDormand. Was yeah, I think she should have. Yeah. She should have. I think so. Yeah, the, the, Beyond. The, the thing is about that film, I loved all the ca- I loved all the characters and all the... Just not the film. Well, yeah, I, I just didn't understand. like the film overall. I can understand. It was still my favourite. Yeah. Okay, so that means it's time for letters. Have we got some letters? We got a letter. One. We got a letter. From Ready a... for the theme? Yeah. We have mail. These three males just received emails. Well, what are we supposed to do about it? Fucking read 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 So this question slash letter is from Francis Elijah Antonio Siberini. Yeah. This is one of Adam's mates. And he asks us, who would you cast in a live action remake of The Incredibles? I thought about this. John Cena, Mr. Incredible. No, never. <laughs> I say Dave Arbour from from Stranger Things. Stranger Things. The dad. Yeah, now he's beefed up to be Hellboy. Yeah. yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Scarlett like Johansson is the mum, I'd say. Yeah. Danny DeVito is the baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got, what's his name? Dash. You know all the names, don't you? I can't remember the, other, the girl's name. Scarlett, so who's a young yeah. actor at the moment? The kids Macaulay from Stranger Culkin, Things. He's young, isn't he? Macaulay Culkin's young. <laughs> he's going to make a comeback. Son. So okay, yeah. let's, let's let's go over it. So you've got Dad, the Mum, so Mister and Mrs Incredible, Dash. What's the girl called? The girl. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Baby. Their names. Baby was Jack, and I remember that much. Then you've got the guy on top of the big thing with legs. You've got Frozo. What's his name? Jesus, aren't we just doing the family? No, the he's family. doing the whole fucking. You got class. and then you got Freeze, and then you probably got what's her name? Edna Krabappel. Well, not Edna, that's from The Simpsons, but... I know what you mean. The, the woman who should play he'll her, be, he'll the be little Cho. one with the glasses. He'll be Cho from Hangover in mm-hmm. a week. <laughs> who will? The Edna, whatever her name is. Will be that one from Hangover. Hangover, the Chinese man. But she's not Chinese. She, I think she is. She's not. <laughs> I think she is. She's not. <laughs> she just she wears glasses. <laughs> the woman, that doesn't mean she's Chinese. The woman who <laughs> plays her will be the woman from Kindergarten Cop, the little lady. Who runs the school? She's Guarantees. probably dead now. But I bet no. I reckon that's what she was based on. Do you know who should play Mr. Incredible oh, visually? Yeah. Is the guy from uh, the guy who looks like Rick Mel's older brother, British comedian Greg something. Do you know who Greg I mean? Smith, one from the um, in between us. Yeah. yeah. Visually, oh, yeah. he looks like Mr. Incredible. Yeah. Okay. The wife should be played by the woman from Modern Family. Okay. Okay, yeah, I don't know when you're a yeah. girl's wife. The one who earns all the money in Modern Family. They want to, oh, she's the biggest c- 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 sitcom actress earning money. I don't know. What name is. I don't watch Modern Family, that's all I know. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Every episode, there's a line that Adam says, I don't understand what you Even mean. you're in the room this time. Just disregard it. Just disregard it. I always um, do. So, a little kid, I don't know. I don't know them kids. Someone from Stranger Things. Give it to Finn Wolfhard. Eleven could play. Is that his name? <laughs> Wolf Hard. Wolf Hard, not far. <laughs> Adam um, can be Mister Incredible. Give me money, I'll do it. No, he'd be Dash. His <laughs> hair, his hair won't go back though. It stays in one position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Walter Goggins and yeah. Tomb yeah. Raider. Samuel L. Jackson can be uh, whatever that guy was called. Froze. Was it name? Frozone. Yeah, because he was that guy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Who played the voice of Mister Incredible? I don't know. I don't know. Owen Wilson. Tim Robbins. Was it? Probably. <laughs> Can't say probably. <laughs> well, they've got the same chin. Okay, so guys, we've decided on none of the characters well, I, mean, I know. The answer is, if they cast the real life Incredibles movie, I won't go to see it anyway. You're going to see the Incredibles yeah. too? Maybe. That's fine. That's fine. So, we, so Greg Davis, the dad. <laughs> yeah, the shit is cast. The, the baby is Danny DeVito. Which yeah. is I would see that. Adam's going to be Dash, yeah. but his hair won't move. <laughs> uh, Samuel Jackson is 
going to keep his role himself. The, himself. And that Chinese guy is going to play the and little the Chinese lady. So we haven't got the bad guy. Play... The bad guy will be played by Seth Rogen. See, that's yeah. when I talk about the Curly Hair. Day when Francis told me about the question, he Walnut said Jonah Hill should play. Yeah, Jonah Hill, yeah. Jonah Hill. That's better than Seth Rogen, yeah. We just need the mum. Scarlett Johansson is the mum. Or we said the girl from Modern Family. Yes. I can't remember what they look like too much now. Well, she she has darker hair though. I don't think. Scarlett and the girl Anderson. from Cape Fear should be the daughter when she was younger. Julia yeah, Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, she should keep her younger to look and be the daughter. Yeah. It's all right. Well, Daniel Vio's made a baby, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> About eighty fucking years old. <laughs> and this is why we've never made a film before. Well, I yeah. think that's done. Thanks for that question, though. That's nice. I liked it. I won't be watching it. No, never. I'll watch it if that was the cast. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You come to Premier if I'm in it, I'll get you all in. <laughs> yeah. You won't. You could direct it. You could direct it. It goes your head. You could direct it. Yeah. And Paul can edit it. Good. Sorted. Sounds good. And then Disney Danny can, just... can get us in the next season of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. And then I would see it. What's gonna be the plot line? Of what? The film. Who are we saving? A bunch of actors go to the Memphis gets stolen. And pick up Memphis their gets chips. taken to an island because all dogs have got diseases. That's called the Isle of Dogs. <laughs> Do you know why the film's called Isle of Dogs? Because it's based in London. Because they drop it all on the Isle of Wight. No. Because when you say when you see it written, and when you say it out loud, it sounds like you say I love dogs. Oh, that's cute. I just read that. That's well, what in, that, in that. Empire. Very good. No, and this morning on Twitter. I, I like, like it because it's more. like Actually, uh, yeah, I like to see Isle of Dogs. I love do you? Like, you love dogs? No, I I love dogs. Do you? You love dogs? That's quite cool. No, I love dogs. I want to see Isle of Dogs. So, what film are we reviewing next? Then next is going to be Ready Player One. Okay, Ready Player One. Ready Player Which One. Which we all can't wait for because we watched the trailer last night. We were blown away, weren't we? I wasn't because I don't understand what the fucking film's no, about. No, neither still, do I. And I don't get why there's so much hype. No, nope. it's like they show. Okay, here's the Iron Giant. Yeah, and now here's the DeLorean. Here's and now a, here's a bunch Deathstroke. of unrelated shit. Here's Harley Quinn. And then at the end of it, it had the yeah. Mario noise. It was very confusing, yeah. man. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand what it's about. Still, no. I think there's so much going on that we can't really get it. Out and of I context. think that's what's going to be the wrong. That's why it's going to not be great. It's going to be a down. It's going to be worse than shit. Tomb Raider. Yes. Probs. Right. That's it. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for, for that letter. Thank careers. you, guys. You can get in touch with us too at Filmbusters Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or you can email Adam's us at filmbusters at outlook.com. Filmbusters at outlook.com. Adam's already walked away, just like last time. <laughs> I'm standing He's up gone. and stretching. He's standing up and stretching. And I'm going. Shaking it out. Right, guys, just me on the podcast now. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you. These guys, they don't want to say thank you for watching. Oi, right, guys, actually, I won't, say, I won't say thanks for watching. I'll say thanks for listening because it's a podcast. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah,